Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the full body pipe at IK inspector. Let's start by adding the component. If the armature looks all nice and blue, and you see the little blue arrows on the elbows and knees pointing towards the natural bending directions of the limbs, we can play the scene. At first, you don't really see anything. That is because none of the effectors are used. Let's just weigh in the left hand effector and see what happens. You will get the blue button in the scene view and when you click on it and activate the move tool you will be able to move the effect around. If you also enable rotation weight you will be able to also rotate the effector. You can weigh in another effector if you like or even all of them at the same time. The best way to learn what all those sliders and toggles do is to just play around with them and see how they affect the solver. Of course, all final IK components have tooltips for each property field. If you right click on any final IK component header, you will get a direct link to the relevant page in the user manual or script reference. Next, let's quickly talk over what each variable does. First is the fixed transforms toggle. If this is enabled, the character will be forced to the initial pose in each update. That enables us to use the solver when no animation is playing on the character. The root node is the central node in the solver that is used by the body effector. It needs to be assigned to one of the bones in the spine. Solver weight can be used to smoothly blend the IK effect in and out, and iterations is a quality to performance trade-off. If you set iterations to zero, the full body effect will not be calculated, which will greatly improve the performance. Now let's move on to the individual body parts. To each effector we can assign a target transform that the effector will reach towards. Then we have the position and rotation weights and exclusive to the body effector an option to also use the thighs. If this is enabled the body effector can be easily used to move the hips around. Next is the spine stiffness and pull body weights. Their effect becomes evident when you use one of the hand effectors. Spine stiffness obviously makes the spine stiffer. Pull body weights can be used to move the body along when being pulled by the hands. Mapping options like spine iterations and twist weight only matter when there are more than two bones assigned to the spine. Maintain head rotation weight rotates the head back to where it was before the solver solved for that frame. The limbs have a couple of extra parameters. Next to position and rotation weights there is a maintain relative position slider. This determines how the hand behaves when the other hand's effector is used. Would it remain where it was or move along with the chest? The pull weight determines how much this limb is able to pull other limbs. If this limb's pull is 1 and all others are 0, you can drag the character by its hand to infinity. The reach weight can be used to pull the body closer to the hand effector. Push is the opposite repelling the shoulder when the hand comes too close to it. There are smoothing options for both reaching and pushing. The bend cone slot can be used to make the limb bend towards an object in the scene. 
You can only see it once you've been able to bend gold weight. If you set limb mapping weight to zero, it will not be touched by the solver and will remain as animated. To maintain hand rotation weight is basically the same as maintain head rotation weight. This basically concludes this tutorial and if you need more help, uh, first, as I already said, just try to play around with those uh, parameters on your own and see how they work. And also I'd like to remind you that right click on the component header, click on user manual and you get detailed information about everything you need. So that's all for now and uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.